Welcome to Robot Wars on Nickelodeon. Today you're going to see Mayhem, Vengeance, the Battle of the Spinners, and the main event, the Challenge Belt. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Master of Mayhem, Dave Azer. Welcome to Nickelodeon Robot Wars. The greatest robots in the world have gathered here tonight for a chance to challenge each other in a variety of different events. The main event tonight is our Challenge Belt. The current U.S. champion, a robot named Tyrannobot, currently holds the belt. Tonight he will be challenged by Tut Tut, a powerful pyramid with an axe that is prone to do damage. But first up, let's go to the pits and Vivianne for the real deal. I'm back here in the pit, Dave, watching it all happen and bringing you the updates. Right now, there's a whole lot of excitement, a lot of last-minute tune-ups, and a whole lot of anticipation. We're all getting ready for the first match, and I have a feeling it's going to be close. That's right, Vivian. Our first battle is going to be the Mayhem battle with three awesome bots. Then we're going to see the Vengeance battle with Bunny Attack and Hood. Then we're going to see Battle of the Spinners with Ninjitsu and Destructive Criticism. And then the main event, the Challenge Belt, Tut Tut up against Tyrannopod. From Colorado, Propeller Head. So our first spot today, Propeller Head in at 217 pounds has a 90 mile an hour speed with that blade and a three inch clearance. Hi, I'm Jacoby with Team Robot Dojo. This is Becky Konchak and Mike Konchak. We're here at Robot Wars and we're ready to have fun. From California, Dylon. Cylon in at 184 pounds, running a couple of wheelchair motors. He's got a major flipping plate, and he is quick. Hi, I'm Jason Moore. This is my mom, Wendy, and my dad, Jim. We're Team Ticos, and our robot is Cylon. We're here at Robot Wars, and we're ready to kick some butt. From Oregon, Rosie the Riveter 2. Last but definitely not least, Rosie the Riveter in her 215 pounds with a 24-volt belt-driven metal saw on that aluminum and Lexan wedge. Our team is Logan Sai. This is Rosie the Riveter. I'm Tony. This is Mike and Tom. We're here to damage some robots and tear some metal. Robot here. Spots joining in this mayhem round will be Shunt with that Diamond Edge Axe. And joining Shunt, the matriarch of mayhem, Matilda. Three, two, one. So the way this mayhem works, three bots start out, only one can go through. And immediately, Rosie the Riveter is all over Zylon. And then Cylon comes and dishes it back out again. Rosie's got plenty of speed to get out of the way. And fantastic driving by 10-year-old Jacoby from Propellerhead. Rosie rips off a piece of Zylon's casing. Just sitting there in the middle of the arena. And now Rosie's going after Propellerhead. Well, Propellerheads can do some major damage when that blade gets up to speed. Just a question if he can penetrate Rosie's incredible low-to-the-ground design. Rosie pushes propeller head right into that corner patrol zone, and Shunt knows what time it is. Every time anybody goes into those corner patrol zones, it's time for the house bot to do a little house cleaning. Rosie goes out to the center of the arena and takes a good run. There's Anthony Light, 12 years old, doing a great job out there for Rosie. Rosie hits the pit trigger. Good bit of strategy by Anthony. And Rosie is going to stay away from the pit if he can. Propeller head is right up on the top of Zylon. And Rosie takes full advantage. Great driving skills. As Refbot gets into the action, Propeller head has got that blade going up, but he's going after the wrong spot. 
And there's the spinning blade of Jacoby, who's at the helm of Propellerhead, who's in a little bit of trouble right now, but spins off a Rosie and Cylon. The 10 second count is going down. So if there isn't one clear winner, this is gonna have to go to a judge's decision. What a great battle this has been. <laughs> and there's the judges trying to figure out who's going to be at the top of that dog pile. So while they're thinking about it, let's have a look at some of that action. Rosie the Riveter was dominating in the beginning of that round, but Propeller had knew how to dish it out. And even Zylon was in on the act, although it took some mean hits. Well, we can only hope that every match is as good as that one was. The judges had a hard time deciding who won, but the winner of that Mayhem competition and the team advancing to the finals is the Propellerhead team. Yeah. Tremendous match, really. It could have gone, it could have gone any way. Tell me about the blade on your robot. I mean, that thing is nasty. Well, the blade's made out of a leaf spring of a car, and it goes about 100 to 120 miles per hour. All right, well, guys, I think a huge round of applause for all of our teams. Really, a tremendous match. They don't get much better than that. Coming up after the break, we've got a vengeance battle with Bunny Attack and Hoot. Then the battle of the spinners, and then the challenge belt with reigning champion Ivan and Tyrannobot up against the challenger Nancy Rodriguez and her bot Tut Tut. Welcome back to Nickelodeon Robot Wars. Tonight's big event is a challenge belt between the current U.S. champ Tyrannobot and the upstart Tut-Tut. Will Tyrannobot hold on to the belt or will Tut-Tut mummify the reptile and take it away? We'll soon find out, but first, a vengeance battle. A match between two robots with a history of hatred. Let's go to the battle board and get the matchup. Well, I don't know about the chicken and the egg thing, but who's going to come first here? The bunny or the bird? Bunny attack up against the hoot for the vengeance battle. I am here in front of the tunnel entranceway to the arena, and very shortly, two teams will be walking through that tunnel for the vengeance battle. We've got hoot and bunny attack right over here is the hoot team, Scott, Hannah, and Alana. So tell me, Hannah, what is your weapon on hoot? It's a spinning disc. Okay, what kind of damage can it do? It can hurt other robots by spinning, and um, it and it has little triangles, and it, it can take stuff off the other robots. All right. Okay, well, we'll see what it looks like in just a little bit. But now let's talk to who they're taking on. Bunny attack. We've got Mike, Andrew, and Benjamin. So, Benjamin, tell me a little bit about bunny attack. Well, it has an 8-pound sledgehammer on it. Okay, so what kind of damage can the sledgehammer do? A lot. Okay, and I know, Andrew, you had something you wanted to let them know. As far as the fate of Hoot, we don't give a hoot. All right, you heard it from Andrew. Will it be the owl or will it be the bunny? We'll see because the vengeance battle is getting ready to start. From Massachusetts, Bunny Attack. There's Bunny Attack with that flammable fur in at 200 pounds. He's got wheelchair motors and an eight pound sledgehammer. Let's see what he can do with it. From California, Oops. And there's the little spinning arm blade of Hoot at 215 pounds. He can defend from all sides, but those weapons don't look very strong to me. Roboteer, stand by. And the house bots in this vengeance round will be dead metal with that circular saw blade. And Sir K with the big old pincers. Three, two, one, activate. Well, Bunny Attack and Hoot 
are facing off for this vengeance round. And who'd gotten up to speed with those spinning blades, but just stopped short of any real damage. And now it's time for bunny attack with that sledgehammer, or is it a butter knife? What are they doing out there? That thing doesn't look like it's got very much power behind it. It might weigh eight pounds, but I think it's got a gravity feed on it because there's not much of a motor. He just, he's annoying him. That's what he's doing. He's tapping away at Hoot just to make him a little more angry because he's not inflicting very much damage, that's for sure. And here comes Sir K to stir it up a little bit. Sir K doesn't have a very long patience lead when it comes to slow battles. And he's gonna make Bunny Attack feel it first. Well, the Bunny Attack boys are stuck on top of that steam vent. And Hoot goes spinning off into the clouds. There's Sir K backing into his corner patrol zone. And Hoot goes in full speed and just blows two of his spinning blades right off. And Bunny Attack retaliates with a little more pointless tapping and some wheel spin to boot. Somebody's hit that pit trigger, so you know what that means. If there's no big damage going on in this battle, oh, the damage is with Sir K. Grabbed that sledgehammer, but Bunny Attack backed out just in time. Well, Hoot and Bunny Attack has probably not been the biggest battle I've ever seen, but K has gone in there and completely stripped Bunny Attack of what little weapon they had to begin with. And there's the hammer to breed to prove it. As the 10 second clock pounds down, this is gonna have to go to a judge's decision. Is it gonna be the lesser of two evils? Who knows? Sir K backs them both into the pit. There we go. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Sir K has never been known for his patience. What a great vengeance match. Both robots really battled all the way to the end. Now, normally what we would do, is throw it over to the panel of judges and have them decide who won. But since you guys were so loud and into the match, I think we're gonna do it differently and open it up to the fans and let you guys decide who you think won. Is that a good idea? Yeah? All right, so remember the teams competing were Hoot and Bunny Attack. I'll say the name of a team. If you think that that team won, give them a big round of applause, all right? So first of all, let's start with Hoot. Let's hear it if you think Hoot won today. Bunny attack. Yeah! All right. They must have had the rabbit's foot working overtime. Well, it was a Christmas come early for Bunny Attack as Hoot bites the dust. Next up, the battle of the spinners with ninjutsu and destructive criticism. Ninjutsu. And this first spot in this battle of spinners is Ninjutsu at 217 pounds. He's got great handling and maneuverability, and that square blade on the front could do some damage. Hi, we're Team Katana. I'm Evan. This is Jim, Terry, and this is our robot Ninjutsu. We're going to cut up all of the robots. From California, destructive criticism. And here's one who doesn't take criticism lightly, destructive criticism. At 220 pounds, he's got a spinning blade that goes 1,200 RPM. Hi, I'm Kathy, and this is my sister, Caroline, and this is my dad, Randy. And this is, and this is our robot, Destructive Criticism. We're Team Boomer, and we're going to spin all the robots out of the arena. Roboteer, stand by. Spots in this battle of the spinners, dead metal with that circular saw and shot with that diamond edge axe, controlling those corner patrol zones. Three, two, one, activate. Well, ninjutsu up against destructive criticism. Immediately, something flies off a of destructive criticism. And Ninjutsu gets that blade up to major speed. There's a few trade-offs in this battle as Destructive Criticism has got a higher top-end speed, but Ninjutsu's got that blade that gets up to speed a little quicker. 
And right now, they're using it up against Destructive Criticism, who's taken a bit of a beating. Great strategy by 13-year-old Evan White for Ninjitsu. And there's Kathy Eubanks, 10 years old, that's trying to do anything she can do to penetrate Ninjitsu. And now Ninjitsu gets its square blade right into the side of Destructive Criticism and takes the chain off. We don't know if that's a weapon chain or a drive chain, but those wheels are in serious trouble on Destructive Criticism. Ninjitsu, great piece of driving. Evan White has got to be proud of his strategy at this point as everything is falling off of Destructive Criticism now. And shot backs into the pit trigger. You know what that means. It's time for somebody to hit the pit. The audience knows what time it is. And Destructive Criticism's not giving up yet. With those bent drive wheels, barely anything left. The disc has been triggered, and there's the 10-second clock counting down. Well, if he can get Ninjitsu out of that corner into the pit, it could be all over. Otherwise, this is going to a judges. Jeez. And that's what's happening. Well, while the judges try to figure out who spun out, let's look at some of that action. Ninjitsu from the beginning was tearing holes into destructive criticism. Pieces flying everywhere. And then a drivetrain went, or a weapon chain. And Ninjitsu definitely had the upper hand, but destructive criticism was pushing till the end. All right, the judges have rendered their decision in this battle of the spinners, and the winning team is Ninjitsu. Three looks of complete astonishment right here. I I'm guessing you guys didn't think you were going to win, did you? Well, we weren't sure because it was because it was a very close fight. These are very equally matched robots, and um, we just weren't sure. Uh, we were a little nervous, but... All right, over here to these guys. Uh, you came up a little short. Good match. Now, what was your strategy? You guys had very similar weapons. You both had the spinners. What was your strategy with your weapon? What were you trying to do? Just um, try to get them. I don't know. <laughs> Well, that does it for this match. A big round of applause for both of our teams that competed here today. Well, lots of carnage and destruction here in the Battle of the Spinners, but there could be only one winner, and that was Ninjitsu. Andrew and I are hanging with the house bots. Andrew thinks that dead metal's pretty cool, but Andrew's got an even better house bot face. Let's see it. Come on. There you go. Check out the house box on Nickelodeon Robot Wars. The time has come for the main event. Tyrannobot, the current U.S. champ, is preparing to defend his title and belt against the challenger Tut Tut. Let's get to it. We said it was going to happen, and now here it is. The battle for the challenge belt is about to get underway. Ivan and Tyrannobot currently hold the belt, but get this. Nancy and Tut Tut want to try and take it away. Well, sit tight, because the battle for the challenge belt is getting ready to start. From Oregon, Tut Tut. There's the pyramid shaped Tut Tut, the challenger. At 215 pounds, he's got a pneumatic axe and a really powerful lifting arm. From Michigan, Ty Renabai. And the reigning champion, Ty Renabai. At 220 pounds, he's got more power in his push than his bite, but he's got some serious moves. Roman Deer. Stand by. And the house spots in this challenge belt will be Shunt. And joining Shunt on the other corner patrol zone, Dead Metal. Three, two, one. Activate. And here we go for the main event. The challenge belt as Tut Tut circles in and buries that pickaxe right into the side of Tyrannobot. 
Nancy Rodriguez, good bit of driving there. Tut Tut is stuck right to the back of Tyranobot. And Tyranobot gets out of the way, but backs right into Refbot. Tut Tut, great evasive moves. Ivan Loftus is making sure he doesn't make any mistakes here. He doesn't want to give up that championship too easily. As Tut Tut is always on the offense in this round. Really just pushing Tyranobot back. And now it's time for Tyranobot to do a little pushing. And drags Tut Tut right into Dead Meadow. Who's burying the saw into that poor pyramid bot. Tut Tut tries to get out of the way and runs into Refbot. And now back into Tyranobot with that big axe. Nancy Rodriguez is trying to find the Achilles heel of Tyranobot. And Tyranobot was just parked up against the rails. It looks motionless. Oh no, this could be an upset. Nancy Rodriguez's driving skills for Tut Tut may have put her on top as Dead Metal slices through the tire of Tyranobot. Tyranobot dead to the world. Ivan Loftus just can't figure it out. They might have a burnt out motor or something, but Refbot is doing the countdown as Dead Metal is cleaning the debris and now shut is in on the action with that Diamond Edge axe. As Ivan looks on, Shunt is going to take a parade lap with a lifeless Tyranobot and setting him up for the inevitable airtime. Shunt up on the flipper. The pit trigger's been handled. Dead Metals after Tut Tut. Are we going to get some air out of Tyranobot? Yes, indeed. Nice bit of hang time. The Tyranobot comes back down on its feet. Look at that. Beautiful air time. All kinds of air. That's 220 pounds of butt getting launched over eight feet in the air. As Shunt is about ready to bury the dinosaur. And it looks to me like the challenge belt's been won by the challenger, Nancy Rodriguez. As we look at Tyranobot go down one more time, Tut Tut is the champion. So, Tut Tut now holds the challenge belt. They have taken it away from Tyranobot. Ivan, you guys weren't smiling much, but I did notice the one time that you smiled was when your robot actually got flipped in the air. I did notice that. Why would you smile then? You found that amusing? Well, it lost the cord, so it couldn't drive, couldn't receive the signal, so we couldn't move at all. But you kept smiling all the way through. So congratulations on, on holding this belt. And now the presentation of the challenge belt to the new champions, the new holders of the belt. Tut Tut, let's give them a round of applause. Led by Nancy. The belt belongs to you now, and there's tons of challengers out there just watching, trying to come up with a strategy to beat you guys and take the belt away. Look right there. What do you want to tell them? Come and get it. All right, she says, come and get it. You heard it. Come and get it. That's it for another episode of Nickelodeon Robot Wars. And we want to thank all of our competitors and all of our magnificent champions. Until next time, join us for more great robot action. We'll see you later, guys. Take care. And remember, building robots is extremely dangerous and should not be attempted without great care and parental supervision. For more information, please visit www.nick.com.